Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. My name is Mario Bay, and I'm the deputy head of the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise Secretariat. Um, welcome to the session, a global agenda for cyber capacity building the outcomes of the Global Conference on Cyberspace 2017. Um, before I will introduce the panel, we will present you with a short introductory video on the GFCE and the Global Agenda process. Digitalization is transforming the world at a rapid pace. We cope with these ongoing changes and challenges by building our cyber capacities. The Global Forum on Cyber Expertise is a neutral platform that coordinates cyber capacity building initiatives. The platform consists of members from countries, international organizations, and private companies. The GFCE works pragmatic and action-oriented. GFCE members aim to identify successful policies, practices, and ideas. In doing so, they work together with partners from NGOs, the tech community, and academic institutions. This way, best practices and expertise in cyber capacity building are exchanged and multiplied to strengthen cyber capacity on a global level. Moving forward, the GFCE community continues to find smarter ways to work together, build new partnerships, establish best practices, and provide assistance at the national and global level. To achieve this, the GFCE community is developing a global agenda for cyber capacity building. The agenda presents a shared set of principles and prioritized cyber capacity building topics. Thus, the agenda serves as a guide for the GFCE and beyond to strengthen international cooperation and to create a common global focus. Through identifying existing gaps in knowledge, technology, and expertise, the global agenda matches stakeholders' needs to available resources. GFCE putting principles into practice. Um, then for the panel, I am accompanied uh, at the table from your right to left um, by Vladimir Radunovic. He is the director of e-diplomacy and cybersecurity educational and training programs of the Diplo Foundation. Then Lea Kaspar, she is Executive Director of Global Partners Digital. Next to her is Robert Collett, he's a diplomat of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office of the UK. Then Carmen Gonzalves, GFC Co-Chair and Head of International Cyber Policies at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands. Then I have on my right, Paul Nicholas, he is Senior Director, Global Security Strategy and Diplomacy of Microsoft. Next to him is David Van Duren, Head of the GFCE Secretariat. And then last but not least, Arnold Van Rijn. He is Senior Policy Advisor of Global Internet Governance at the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Policy of the Netherlands. The Panel members will now elaborate on different aspects of the global agenda and next steps in their respective fields. And depending on time, we will take questions from the audience and online after the deliberations of the panel members. So David, may I ask you to take the floor? Yes, yes thank you. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. Um, as head of the, the of the GFC Secretariat, I would like to welcome you. And I think the next hour, we will dis discuss the latest developments uh, within the global form of cyber expertise, and in particular, the, the GFC Global Agenda for Cyber Capacity Building, and the GFC Global Good Practices that were discussed at the GCS in 2017, like uh, one month ago. Um, I would like to take this moment to look back on the development of the GFCE. Uh, we are here, uh, we are, uh, like the GFCE was launched about two and a half years ago. And also to look a little bit forward with you. Um, looking back on the development of the GFCE so far, um, I think the foundation of the GFCE was already laid down in 2013. At the Global Conference on Cyberspace in Seoul in 2013, cyber capacity building was for the first time 
put as a key priority on a political agenda. So this was the first time that we, that we on a high level raised, agenda, raised awareness for this important topic of cyber capacity building. And then at the Global Conference of Cyberspace 2015 in The Hague, um, the GCCS community built further on this by developing a structure, uh, and the structure was, uh, was the GFCE. Um, the GFCE was, the, uh, was, I think, the main deliverable of the GCCS in 2015. Uh, to characterize the GFCE, for people here who are not, uh, are not a member, um, I think it's an informal, neutral, and bottom-up and action-oriented platform, and its members and partners aim to exchange best practices, knowledge, and expertise on cyber capacity building. The main focus in 2015 and 2016 was to establish a trusted network within the GFC where members uh, uh, knew, uh, know each other personally, can find each other, and can reach out for collaboration. And that takes time to, to, establish, uh, to establish a network. Further, uh, we've grown from 42 members when we started in 2015, countries, international organizations, and private companies, in a steady pace, about 10, 10 members a year, towards 65 members today. And also, we increased the amount of initiatives within the GFCE. I think now we have 17 initiatives. And in the end, it's our aim to cover the most relevant cyber topics for cyber capacity building. And I think that, uh, in my opinion at least, uh, the, the participation and international cooperation among GFCE members within initiatives is the core of how the GFCE works. The third, we installed an advisory board um, to include academia, civil society, and the tech community to the core activities of the GFC. And I remember like two years ago at the IGF uh, when we had a workshop on the GFCE explaining what it was we were just launched, that, uh, that this was one of the questions, like uh, how is uh, civil society, the tech community, how are they involved in the GFCE? So this is one of the, on one of the elements uh, we, we took up. And in 2017, uh, the focus of the GFCE was on the development of a global agenda for cyber capacity building and these global good practices. And this global agenda is an instrument. And I think for the GFCE, it's not a goal in itself. Uh, by this agenda, um, we will strengthen international cooperation uh, because we have a common focus. Uh, also, I hope we, we are able to make more efficient use of available resources by reducing overlapping global activities because there's a lot going on around. The fifth global conference on cyberspace in India just last month provided an excellent uh, momentum to give again a political impulse to the importance of cyber capacity building and also to reaffirm the position of the GFCE as a global platform for cyber capacity building. And during the GCCS 2017, the global agenda was shared with a wider community by means of the Delhi communique. In this document, and you can also find it on the GFC website, the structure and the priorities of the global agenda repre represented. The, GFC, the GCCS 2017, I think, marks the transition to the next phase of the GFCE, a shift in focus from awareness to implementation. And for the next half a year, the GFC community will develop an action plan as part of this global agenda. And this, uh, this action plan gives answer regarding the question, what will the GFC community do to implement the important topics that are highlighted in this agenda? And for 2019, I hope we can take stock on the progress of the implementation of the global agenda, showing results, making a real difference because that's what I think the GFC is about. And so maybe in the next, the next meeting at the IGF, uh, we, can, uh, we can say something about the outcome. That would be nice. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, Carmen, may I ask you in your capacity 
as GFC co-chair to further elaborate on the process of the global agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. I appreciate thank you for uh, introducing the topic and that's thank you. So, Mike, yes. So, um, the mic. Apologies. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mario, and thank you, David, for introducing uh, the topic of this, ex of this afternoon already in such an excellent manner. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Some of you um, uh, were in Delhi, where we uh, um, together uh, launched the uh, communique, David already referred to, um, that will help us, that will guide us when implementing the, the agenda. And uh, I would just like to uh, uh, briefly add to uh, David's excellent uh, introduction by um, going a bit more into detail about uh, the agenda and, and our plans um, over the next uh, half year. Um, and indeed, let me first uh, um, uh, underscore that indeed uh, the GFCE has developed over the last two and a half years into a knowledge repository and uh, a place, a vibrant, vibrant place to exchange ideas. And I definitely uh, hope that we will continue uh, to, to be as, as enthusiastic as we have been until now as a community, and I'm, I'm very confident that we will do. I think the, 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 the absolute, um, uh, the, well, the success of the, of, 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 our, of the launch of our communique in, in, in Delhi um, forms an excellent basis for, to, to take the next step. The GFCE is, is not only a, a coordination uh, mechanism, I think it has the potential to become a, a clearinghouse where members are uh, actively uh, sharing uh, ideas and good practices and um, together conceiving new strategies for capacity building worldwide. Uh, and, and then also subsequently undertake uh, steps, take initiatives to implement those projects and host projects in their respective countries. It's a very collaborative effort at GFCE. It really depends on the efforts of every member of its community. And that's definitely, I think, the strength and the added value of the GFCE. After the launch of the GFCE in 2015, we sense that um, in order to, to enhance capacity building worldwide and to ensure that all countries and all stakeholders can uh, reap the benefits of, of, of the internet, it is important that we uh, define a global agenda a global agenda on capacity building that will guide our work. Uh, this year, in um, uh, or, uh, sorry, to be in, in, to be honest, in 2016, we uh, mm, with that in goal in mind, we presented a roadmap for the GFCE on the development of such a global capacity agenda. During the GFCE annual meeting in May this year, we gathered input from the GFCE community and incorporated this input in the agenda. So that means just input, active input from all the stakeholders, from uh, private uh, sector participants, from academia, tech community, international organizations. Uh, that um, um, the result of, 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 of um, the input um, uh, found its way into the agenda, uh, which we have um, de facto endorsed um, uh, over the last month. The five themes that uh, define the work uh, in the agenda, that are defined in the agenda as focal points for our work are cybersecurity policy and strategy, which includes the assessment of current national practices, threats and vulnerabilities, and the development and implementation of a comprehensive national security strategy. That's, that's one of the, the, the pillars of work to help members to de design uh, a, um, uh, a comprehensive cybersecurity policy and strategy. And next, uh, the next strand of work that uh, we would uh, focus upon in the agenda is to ensure that every uh, country um, uh, puts in place the uh, right adequate incident management and infrastructure protection. For example, developing national incident response systems to prevent, detect, deter, respond to, and recover from cyber incidents. Subsequently, the, the, the next um, pillar of work on the agenda 
uh, rotates around the combating cyber crime. It's about the enactment, enforcement of comprehensive sets of laws, guidelines, policies and programs relating to cybercrime in line with existing international standards. And the last pillar of our, of our work identified in the agenda um, is about cybersecurity culture and skills, meaning the promotion of comprehensive awareness across government and private sector and empowering the population with knowledge, skills and the sense of shared responsibility in order to ensure practice, safe practice and informed behavior in the use of ICTs. These themes together provide all stakeholders in the field with a comprehensive network framework in which to develop cyber capacities. At the same time, it gives focus to the capacity building initiatives of the GFCE. In order to implement the agenda worldwide, GFCE members and partners who set up GFCE initiatives have defined good practices over the last years, since 2015. And these, um, this inventory of, of good practices, which are available on the website of the GFCE and accessible to everyone, um, help countries or have the potential, and I think the capacity to help countries to learn from each other and not to reinvent the wheel, to look how others have um, taken up capacity building um, efforts in, in, in different um, chapters of our work. So I would like to invite you to, to, to uh, consult the, the website and the um, catalog of, of good practices there, because it definitely is a very hands-on and accessible uh, resource of knowledge. As um, has already been mentioned by, by David, um, our meeting in Delhi um, gave us the opportunity to draw up together as a GFCE community, a communique that will help us to steer our work on the agenda in the coming years. And this uh, communique, um, of course, also gives us a framework um, the, uh, based on the principles and, and themes of the global agenda. Principles such as the applicability of international law and agreed voluntary norms of and confidence building measures were highlighted as um, parameters for our work within the GFCE community. Moreover, um, shared international commitments on human rights, decent work and gender equality were highlighted as being guiding principles for capacity building in the framework of the GFCE. And with uh, over 60 members of the GFCE community present in Delhi, representing, if you uh, calculate, uh, roughly 66% of the world's population, the presentation of the Delhi communique has been a milestone in aligning our joint capacity building effort in cyber, in, in cyber space. Um, and it will enable us to take new steps towards strengthening our, co our cooperation and our coordination. Because indeed that's one of our goals to, to um, continue to develop this vibrant uh, community of uh, stakeholders working together for uh, the sake of uh, increasing uh, cyber capacities worldwide. Um, and in doing so, ensure that we um, um, provide for synergy, um, co 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 sorry, synergy and uh, coherence in our work um, because we want to spread our effort and our, um, our investment as effectively as possible. And the only way to do so is by um, in engaging in a constant coordination effort uh, to ensure that we definitely strengthen each other's efforts. So what, uh, what are we going to do next year? 2018 will be just as important for worldwide capacity building in our view as 2017 has been. Next year we will start to work on the implementation of the global agenda on capacity building. We will um, uh, try to uh, work uh, hard and to, uh, we our aim is to deliver during the GFC annual meeting uh, in the late spring of 2018 
um, a, an action plan, uh, a detailed action plan defining the next steps for the implementation of the agenda. Um, evidently, the GFCE community is invited to uh, be involved actively in the elaboration of this uh, action plan. We will ensure that there are, as ample, um, there are ample possibilities for you to provide input uh, in, the, um, in the action plan. So I would like to uh, invite uh, all of you today, the panelists and uh, all of you in the room, uh, to uh, contribute to the discussion, uh, to start the discussion on the, um, the, the, the action plan here and now because uh, we are definitely very interested in hearing your views on where we should go next. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, Vlada, in your capacity as facilitator of the global good practice process, please take the floor. Thank you, Mario. Um, so you, you've heard quite much about what GFC is. Uh, but you might ask the same question that I had when I also joined the advisory board uh, at the beginning of the GFC um, existence, is like, what do we actually do? And uh, it took me some time to see that there is a lot of work which actually exists within the GFC as an umbrella. And one of the probably um, breaking points was the mandate uh, within the GFC to produce global good practices. And we had, as Diplo Foundation, we had um, um, sort of a partnership with the GFC to help shaping the good, global good practice of the GFC. What does that mean? It means actually looking into what is very practical that was done by the GFC initiatives and members that anyone can implement or join. And that was when, when I must say, uh, my eyes were also uh, additionally opened to, uh, to what GFC has to offer. And I'll just give you a snapshot of that. So imagine the world uh, with all the insecurities of the new products and, uh, and, and systems where um, the systems are actually set based on the highest possible standards uh, to avoid um, vulnerabilities. Is that possible? Probably if you do have someone who actually tells you whether your website, your email uh, or whatever is up to certain standards which are agreed. And imagine one of the initiatives within the GFC uh, internet uh, infra infrastructure and standards actually provides not only um, an idea of how in a multi-stakeholder manner different partners on a national level can agree to implement certain standards, but it also offers um, a website with a tool, very simple one, where you can test your own email and, um, and uh, um, website uh, based on the standards. And I must say, and uh, we've, we've seen that, that the GFC website, imagine that, uh, fulfills all the standards. And Diplo is like 90%, so we're working on that. And I encourage you to, uh, to take a look at the same tool and test yourself. But you'll, I'll tell you where you can find all of that. So that's one thing. Then, as we said, the system is full of, full of vulnerabilities. And there are many companies and uh, technical community which is working on finding these vulnerabilities, mainly uh, trying to put them in their own silos. There is some exchange within the certs, but there is no system which actually connects the dots and takes a look comprehensively at the health status of the network, saying these are the gaps, this is what these guys are doing to mitigate the gaps, this is what you can do as well, this is the progress, and let alone actually shaping all this technical information in a form that policymakers can understand to be able to um, to create a uh, situational awareness or better policies and so on. And again, GFC has an initiative which is called CyberGreen, which, uh, which has a bunch of geeks over there, but they're very capable of not only analyzing data, compiling the metrics, working with different certs, technical community, partners around the world to have the health data of, of the network, but also presenting um, the findings to the policymakers in quite a comprehensive language. So that is something that you can also benefit or simply sort of a copy the idea or join them in, in the efforts. Then, imagine the world in which we could possibly have law enforcement agencies uh, fully skilled with uh, combating cybercrime. That is possible, there are a lot of efforts, but there are a lot of problems when it comes to commitments of governments, when it comes to resources, and so on. So, within GFC context, there is an initiative which is called uh, Glacy. Glacier Plus, it's actually driven by the Council of Europe as, uh, primarily. 
And they have a couple of good practices, and two of them are very specific. One is that in order to make <coughs> uh, a country committed to do capacity building for law enforcement in cybercrime, you actually have to ask the government to approach you and say, we need help. And that means that if they are doing that, they need to form a, co a, a competent and powerful uh, national team to deal with that. And then once you start building capacities in a certain country, you can actually use that country as a regional hub and just assist them to assist other countries. Bearing in mind all the political sensitivities in the region and so on, with support of Council of Europe, GFC, many other partners. And that's an interesting um, approach, but it's also an interesting, very practical practice that the GFC can offer. So take a look at that one. And then, if on a national level you want to um, start working on, on um, policy strategies, um, operational uh, mechanisms, one thing you need to do is to see what existing capacities you actually have in the country. And that's probably the smart way to start. And that's where GFC can also assist. So there is an initiative which deals with maturity models, uh, where particularly with the Oxford Center, which offers a model for, for um, assessing the maturity of the capacities in the country, you can uh, get the full assessment and know where to start from. And it's also quite a practical uh, example. And a couple of more practical examples that you can imagine. Some of those is, Imagine that you have certs which know how to communicate, we know, know how to work, uh, know how to um, even act as intermediaries uh, in conveying the knowledge about vulnerabilities. Because that's a major problem. You, can, you have hackers which do a bit of trying here and there, finding vulnerabilities. And there are many of those which are actually ethical hackers. But when they have to submit the vulnerability to a company, then the company may easily put a charge against them because they've been messing up with their system. So you have to have an intermediary who can actually sort of anonymize one person and help the other and understand this relation. And also you have to have a policy framework on a national level, Netherlands is probably one good example of that, uh, which boiled up through the GFC. How do you do that? How do you create an environment in which shirts can do that and in which um, the ethical hackers could feel comfortable to actually do that, to have the, the whole environment more secure? And then, of course, full set of things about confidence build, building measures and many others. So this is just a snapshot of some of the very practical global good practices that we manage uh, in, uh, in cooperation with the initiatives. At least some of those, because some are still new and don't have practical practices that we can say are global and good yet, um, that we compiled in a, in a report. The report is, of course, big. It's about, I think, 60 pages. But the point is that you don't have to go through all of them, even though I encourage you to do that. But you can simply pick those that target your st uh, stakeholder group or uh, your area of interest. Capacity building, um, cybercrime, incident response, uh, assessment, and so on. And to help that, we try to make a visualization where you can easily, like in a game, pick a stakeholder illustration and then pick a topic which you wish and land directly to the GGP, the global good practices of your interest. So I invite you to visit the GFC website. It's quite clearly show, I, I don't think you'll get lost. And go to the global good practices and try to find what's of, of your interest and see how you can benefit from GFC, I'm sure you can, whatever stakeholder you are, and how you might possibly join the efforts that GFC already does within existing initiatives or maybe, maybe the future one. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll shut up now, thank you. Thank you, Vlada, for this uh, promotion. Um, Paul, may I ask you as a representative of um, the GFC private sector to share your view? Great. Well, first of all, I would just like to say thank you very much to the Dutch government. Um, I think the vision and the leadership that you have uh, demonstrated with the creation of GFCE and your commitment to it is just astounding. Um, it's easy to talk about capacity building. It is, in fact, very hard to do. Um, my team at Microsoft, over the years, we've developed papers and synthesized best practices that we've either had internally or we've seen from others. And we've tried to deliver them in workshops. We've partnered in the past with people like the Organization of American States or the OSCE. And that's really exciting and terrific. But we always sort of felt like we're still a technology company 
And it, you know, people look at it as, oh, well, that's a Microsoft perspective. And I think what's so exciting about the GFCE is it gives us, a, it, it's a platform for people to share things that come in a way that is politically neutral and technology neutral. And I think that is tremendously exciting. The other thing I think is really exciting is sometimes people come into capacity building thinking that it's about sharing what you know. And I would just like to say it's about learning from others because when you work with countries who are trying to implement a critical infrastructure protection strategy, you find out that they have unique risks and then unique functions and unique challenges that maybe you haven't seen in six others. And what you come away from that is, I think, as valuable as what you are able to share. Um, I'm super excited about the agenda that the GFCE has put together. Um, I think helping countries with standards and security baseline or critical infrastructure or cybercrime or national strategy so that they actually have a framework that puts these assets and investments together is so, so very important. We live in a, a, a challenging world and I think the GFCE is just a, a very important thing and I'm super excited for Microsoft to continue its commitment uh, as we move forward with the new agenda and uh, really look forward to, to doing more work. Thank you. Thank you, that's all. Looking forward also to uh, work with Microsoft further on this. Um, Robert, could you please uh, elaborate on how to further the process of the global agenda from your perspective? So I get the easy one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I say a little bit, first of all, about what we're doing, or really what the room is doing? Um, because I think sometimes when we talk about capacity building and the processes, it sounds quite high level. Whereas what I do every day is talk to governments, at least four of whom are in the room, which is great, um, and implementing partners who are out in offices around the world, helping each other in multi-stakeholder ways to make the internet a little bit secure, more secure every day. Um, and I don't think that those projects get enough attention. And so I'm just gonna talk about a couple of them um, which shows to me what capacity building is all about. So um, when the WannaCry uh, attack occurred, it was really important to our ministers. Um, people going to our hospitals had you know, life and death situations occurring because of this attack. And they wanted to know how does capacity building help with them with that? And I was quite pleased to be able to say it really does. We had a partner in India who had a honeypot which was monitoring uh, the internet in real time. They picked up the incidents immediately and they were able to talk to the local state government and law enforcement and to us and say, this is what we're detecting and this is the information we can share. We then had a phone call from the OAS saying, you've helped us set up a CERT Americas network, which is joining up the CERTs of Latin America. They want to have a conference on Monday. Can you dial into that conference so that we can share CERT to CERT information to speed up our response? And then afterwards, we have a project with the International Association of Prosecutors, who are now training prosecutors around the world in how you prosecute ransomware. So from one end to the other, I'm able to say to our ministers, capacity building does practical things, which helps the wider international community, but also helps the UK because we share the same vulnerabilities as they do. Um, and then another example, if I may, in Delhi, India hosted an event where members of the Commonwealth from government, civil society, private sector, were able to come together talk about how they could build on the global agenda, um, talk on how they could build about build on the ideas which were coming out of the Commonwealth. Those ideas are then going to be taken forward to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in April, but even sooner than that, our implementing partners are now out there setting up projects which respond to the needs which were identified in that working group. So to me, it's a practical thing that happens day to day. Um, and we think the Dutch are brilliant for finding a forum which can take those thousands of projects, group them into five different themes, and now to answer the question finally, what do we do next? Um, I think for us it's about 
having communities, or there are already communities, but structuring the communities that already exist around those five themes. There can be other communities for other structures, but this is one format in which they can meet. And using those groups to say, what is the extent of the problem? How do we measure the problem? How do we then identify what needs to be done in a very practical way this year, next year, and getting together the groups of people who want to work together to find those solutions. Um, and I know that that work is being done already, but having these themes agreed in that non-political, non-technology-specific uh, you know, way uh, allows us to really put our weight behind those initiatives. And it's the people in this room and a lot of other rooms like this which are going to make that happen. The UK government is completely committed to it. We'll put our weight behind it as best we can. And it's great to know that there's people from all the other communities who really find this useful too and want to put their weight behind it. So thank you so much to the Dutch government and thank you to all those in the room because um, it's really a partnership of equals and I can see everyone pulling their weight in different ways. So I'm kind of really proud of what we've achieved and what everyone in this room has achieved. So thank you. Um, thank you, Robert. Looking forward to, to our continued cooperation. Thank you. Um, Lea, as the GFC Advisory Board co-chair, could you please elaborate on the Global Agenda process from an advisory board perspective? Thank you, Maria, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so here I'm speaking in my capacity as the co-chair of the GFC Advisory Board. Um, and the, uh, just before, before I kind of give you a little bit of what the advisory board is and what we do and what we're going to be doing next, I was just, uh, um, I guess, uh, inspired by something that uh, Rob just said, which is the, the partnership of equals. Um, but as a lot of you will know, when it comes to cybersecurity, even though we like to say that, y there's a, if you want to paraphrase the animal farm, you know, all stakeholders are equal, but some stakeholders are more equal than others. And if you're coming from a civil society perspective, uh, um, you know, that might uh, um, seem more relevant than, than, than to others. And I'm saying that specifically because when the GFC was first launched in 2015, um, and there was um, um, criticism from the community of it not involving or you, was, you weren't able to join as a member of the GFC if you were a civil society organization. Um, and uh, this is still the case. However, the um, GFC has progressed and I think part of, part of that process it was establishing the advisory board, which I'm still a co-chair of. Um, but there you can now you can also join us as, uh, as a partner. So I think there's also a, a been an evolution in the government's model of the GFC. Um, and uh, I think, and I'm going to come back to, to where, where I see the value of, uh, of the GFC is for non-governmental stakeholders, because I think that's important to note for those of you in the room who might not be able to join as members. Um, so just briefly, the advisory board itself, we are now in, in our 18th month, more or less. So we've been uh, in place for a year and a half. And I think uh, similarly to the GFC itself, we've experienced some growing pains, uh, if, if, if I could put it like that. Vlad here is a, is a fellow uh, board member as well, so um, he can corroborate this. And we've worked hard to establish our own internal procedures, but I'm not gonna bore you with that. Um, just to give you an idea that, that um, some of the deficiencies perhaps of the, of the model are um, due or a reflection of the fact that we're all learning together how some of these things work. Um, over the past year, year and a half, uh, I think we've, uh, as the GFCE uh, itself, we've done quite a lot and uh, the advisory board has provided substantive input on a number of uh, outputs of the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise, including initially its roadmap and strategy, and then um, uh, finally and uh, most recently, we've provided input uh, into the Delhi Communique, the global agenda and the global good practices that Vlada just, uh, just described. Um, in terms of, uh, what we're going to be doing next. Um, and we have another six months to go in, in kind of our first two years uh, term. Um, we will be supporting the members in the development of the, um, of the action plan to implement the global agenda, which we're very much looking forward to. Um, and um, I, I think as part of that, and this is where, where I'd like to kind of mention where the value really uh, lies from, uh, especially from a civil society perspective, um, of engaging in the GFCE. Um, 
one of the, if you read the Delhi communique, I don't know if many of you have, but it, um, what it states is uh, some of the underpinning principles that should guide capacity building, cyber capacity <coughs> building. And from, um, one of those principles, among others, is, uh, is the inclusive partnerships and the importance of involving different stakeholders in the process of cyber capacity building. And I think that's a, that's a real asset and something that, you know, as non-governmental stakeholders, we, um, we value to have these commitments because then we can say, well, hey, governments, you know, you said you were going to do this in an inclusive and multi-stakeholder way. So when, you know, there's something to, um, in, in line of, in way of accountability, this is important. Um, so uh, just one example of, of how that's, that's how the GFC has contributed to that in practice. I think over the cup, last couple of years, over the, over the last year and a half, um, what the GFC has created is really a hub. Uh, that that facilitates exchange of ideas between different stakeholders and um, uh, for instance my organization global partners digital has had the opportunity through the gfce to work and engage with um, the oas and this has led to a, a partnership in through which we have then supported the oas uh, initiatives in developing national uh, cybersecurity strategies and uh, bringing non-governmental stakeholders to that process at the national level. Now, I'm not saying that the GFC is the only reason why that happened, and I think a lot of this has to do with the OAS itself and the good work that they're doing, but it, had it not been for that hub and that uh, um, exchange, I don't think it would have happened to that extent. And uh, we've now had have in our, you know, the back pocket of, uh, a case study of um, doing that in Mexico and in, in developing a national cybersecurity strategy in Chile and are looking to do that next in Argentina. And I think that's a great example of, of some of the potential and value that I think the GFC can produce um, going forward and uh, as the advisory board that we're excited to be a part of. And last but not least, and I'm sorry for going over time, um, the, um, just to note that the new call for members of the advisory board is going to be launched uh, shortly, I think through the, uh, through the um, GFC secretariat, and I invite anyone who's interested to apply. Thanks. Thank you, Lea. Um, and then, and last but not least, Arnold. Um, Vlada did already a very good job, but can I ask you to uh, present the global good practice of the GFC Internet Infrastructure Initiative? And I would also like to ask you to elaborate on um, co uh, cooperation possibilities between the IGF and the GFCE from your perspective. Thank you very much, Chairwoman. Um, I'll keep it relatively short because lots of ingredients in my intervention has been uh, said already. Uh, you mentioned uh, Slava, but I can't resist mentioning this great example again, but uh, not at, at this moment, later on. But let me first uh, stress that uh, where would we be online if there were no standards? Can you imagine very dangerous environment where there is a lack of justified trust? So we owe a lot of thanks to those people working very hard on those open standards. Those from the ISTAR organization, it's IETF, IEEE, W3C, ISOC, and you can go on. You don't see those people working very hard. It's far beyond our sight, but we owe them a lot because that's why we jumped in as a government to support this initiative the initiative, initiative uh, which is part of the 17 initiatives of the GFCE. It's all about internet infrastructure initiative. And it's on the implementation of open uh, standards, security standards like uh, IPv6, like uh, HTTPS and, and so forth uh, for enhancing justified trust in internet connections and email exchanges. And the aim is to achieve this through local awareness raising and capacity building events, building on global good practices. So thinking globally, but acting locally. And talking about a good uh, uh, practice, it has been mentioned by Slava, but I will say it again. It's, you can write it down, internet.nl, a very interesting uh, tool and useful tool to test, for example, uh, whether the internet connections of your uh, organization or your government is uh, secure enough, whether they apply uh, IPv6 standards, 
Um, so it's in English available. You can apply it everywhere in the world, and it has been uh, done a lot. You can even uh, enter the Hall of Fame, uh, the Internet.nl uh, Hall of Fame. Um, to keep it uh, short, what, what's next now? Because it's all about implementation, and we have to, to go out in the field. We have to go out to, to uh, the local, uh, local places, uh, wherever in the world. Uh, so um, we, and that is the, the GFCE, and the tech community, and our government, the Netherlands, uh, the, the Netherlands Ministry of Economic Affairs, uh, have set up an, a plan to uh, roll out uh, five workshops the coming years. It will start in 2018 in different uh, regions, and then we will work together with uh, the tech community and, uh, and, and uh, local authorities to uh, uh, exchange views of uh, best practices, even to set up a plan and to uh, stress the importance of uh, implementing uh, open uh, standards. Uh, so hopefully this will spread out throughout the world and we, if it's very successful, and I'm very positive that it will be, then of course we can uh, expand it. And our government is more than happy to, uh, to support this also financially. The, financial, the participants uh, are those who, uh, who are working already on the internet and uh, working with the internet and who will bring this further. And uh, we will then, of course, uh, uh, seek this cooperation and uh, uh, really looking forward to a, 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 a concrete action plan in this respect. I'll stop here. Thank you. Wout, you wanted to intervene. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Wout Tenatwis, and on behalf of seven internet organizations in the Netherlands, I've organized a session called Strengthening Cooperation in the Context of the IGF last Sunday. And I think it's important to, to reiterate one of the things that came out there that perhaps not been totally mentioned by the, your esteemed panel, is that how can cross-pollination between existing organizations really take place? Because the, here within the IGF there are several recommendations coming out that intercessional work like best practice forum that come up with best practices. You are developing best practices also and disseminate them within your own communities. But what would be the, the, the extra benefit if you bring the two communities once a year together, for example, at the GFCE, and a half year later, when the IGF happens in 2018, you bring your best practices to the IGF. And that needs to be organized, and that there will be a role for the MAG, who uh, institutes the, the, the whole content of, of, the, of the IGF. But I'll give you two examples. In Delhi, the best practice forum of cybersecurity, there were about 10 people present, and they used the conference to meet and disseminate their ideas to others. And here, just now, I ran in here from uh, the best practice forum of cybersecurity, and the whole concept of protecting the inner core of the, of the internet was, was put on the table there, coming fresh from Delhi, and as one of the potential things to discuss within the, the, the best practice forum of cybersecurity. So how can you actually assist each other in reaching out, in making each other better, and perhaps that uh, is one of the topics the MAG should discuss this year, and it will definitely be in my report that I'm writing uh, very soon, and that I hope the world will know some more about. So thank you for the two minutes. Thank you, Wout. Um, David, would you like to react on that? Um, yes, I, I, I think um, uh, the, the, the GFC is, is a network of networks, and what, what we do is, is and, and for ex and, uh, one example, what we started in 2015 is with, uh, with the Oxford Cyber Capacity Building Center, is this portal to see what's, what's, what's around there, around the world, and on cyber capacity building initiatives. Uh, to know what is uh, what's around there, uh, and also to analyze uh, what's what are needs around the world, but maybe also what are gaps, and uh, to get an overview. So, um, um, and also to to see what are um, initiatives that could be of use for the for the GFCE and to approach. I think uh, the GFCE is an open forum. Uh, uh, content rules, so we're looking for best practices, and then we try to, to set up some sort of cooperation 
It can be like a membership, it can be a partnership, and, and if needed, we will, we will seek for, for another way to connect, to connect uh, relevant parties. Uh, one example, and that's an initiative right now, it's, there is a community already for 10 years on CRIP. It's a Meridian conference. It's like the ITF conference once a year. And they had a steering committee, and there were a lot of countries in the steering committee, and a few of them, or a lot of them actually, were also a member of the GFC. And then they said, okay, we, we said we will not reinvent the wheel. Your community has the knowledge on, on cyber, on, on the critical infrastructure protection. So they started an initiative, and it helped the GFC community to bring in this knowledge about CIRP and experts, and to help them, because they, they had once a year they had a conference and in between nothing happened and they want to have real implementation and in this initiative they have uh, also during the year they have all kind of activities so it's a win-win situation so this sort of things that i'm looking for and within the igf we have a best practice form so so and and like uh, we are looking for best practices within the gfc so uh, so i hope we can find a way to to really sh uh, connect this in a smart way Thank you, Arno. Uh, thank you. Uh, just to follow up, follow up on, the, on that, um, on a personal title, I'm, I'm a member of the multi-stakeholder advisor group uh, of the IGF, uh, and and we are as a MAG working very hard to uh, to get more international organisations, relevant international organisations, uh, uh, to come to the IGF. So um, glad to see that the GFCE uh, uh, joined the, the the IGF and that we are building a, a stronger cooperation, uh, whether it is through the best practice form on cybersecurity or uh, having an, a, a, a boot or even an open form like this one. It's, I think this is a clear example of how it should work, just to, to, as a response uh, to your request to, to uh, have a little bit uh, words on, on that. So uh, hopefully this will be followed up by, by, by many more. The GSCE, GSC, GCSC, that's another example of, of an organization or institute who, uh, who is here available for uh, questions and uh, to build a better relationship. Thank you. Which uh, leaves us with about, let's say, five minutes. We can take questions from the audience. If you have any questions, please step forward. Yes, please. Thank you. Catherine Guitar from the government of Kenya. Um, I've been very pleased to attend the IGF this time because I can see some topics like cybersecurity are coming up and that's good. Uh, but one of the things that came up, especially today in some of the sessions I attended, is um, in this very broad program, um, there are different choices being made by policymakers and by technical people depending on the title. Uh, now, today I attended a technical session on IPv6 just because a colleague asked me to support them. But while I was there, I heard something which has actually influenced me to edit uh, policy which we're developing in Kenya. So, um, in this multi-stakeholder approach that I think Claire referred to, um, what can we do to bring policymakers and very technical people together to converse in such a way that they understand each other and they begin to understand the effects of uh, either their technical choices or their policy uh, drafting. Because I think especially for us in developing countries, uh, this is very useful because we do draft policies and sometimes we we don't have the full understanding of a certain technology and the choice, uh, this influences the way we, we uh, make policy. Maybe we create gaps in the policy. Thank you, Kate. Um, from the panel, who would like to get into that? Lea? I think this is such a, thank you so much for raising that, that, that issue. Um, I, um, if, if anything, I'd like to say that in cybersecurity, there's a lot of talk. Well, uh, here at the IGF, there's a lot of talk about multi-stakeholderism, but when it comes to implementation, we're still quite thin in, cy in this field of cybersecurity, especially at the national level. And I think um, one, of the, one of the ways that I think the GFCE can play a role in this 
is to build on the, the repository of good practices that we can build, uh, that we can look at at the national level. There are some, um, for, I mean, at least that, that I know of, I'm sure there are more as well that we could gather and build upon, um, that, that would be certainly relevant for, for developing countries. <coughs> Um, the, the couple that, that um, examples that uh, I'm familiar with are in, uh, mostly in, in Latin America, but I know that Kenya has a, um, a constitutional provision for very strong consultative processes locally as well. I think that, that really offers a, a good opportunity and uh, already a, a, and there is a, what do you call it, the, the kick-tanet model as well. So there is a basis to, to build on that locally and um, I think there are good practices in other countries that can be then merged and brought uh, in countries like Kenya and uh, bring people together around the same table on issues related to cybersecurity that can be um, beneficial for all stakeholders. Um, yeah, so that's Thank you, Leah. Um, Paul? Yeah, um, yeah it, it, it was a terrific question. I think we do have to do a lot more to get technology people and policy people in the same room. And I think one of the exciting opportunities with GFCE is that operational exchange because uh, when a policymaker gets to see what it happened, how their policy impacts an operation, I think the, the what's on paper actually solidifies an understanding. And I think the more that we can try to bridge that gap, the better we're going to be at operational risk management. But it's a, it's a great thing and I think something we should push forward for. Um, I noticed the roles are reversed in India. It was you on the panel and I was listening to you and now we've swapped around, which is great. Um, I think that this is, the answer to your question is this meeting and it is the GFCE, that members of the GFCE should be able to say, this is the issue that I want help with or I want to be in a community of people discussing. Can you please organize something which serves my needs uh, either to contribute or to, to learn from. So um, without committing to anything, I think the answer would be something like a workshop in Kenya bringing together people from government, industry, civil society, academia to discuss that the questions which are most on your mind um, and the GFCE community can play a role in helping bring the right people to that event, um, helping with logistics or funding for travel. Um, and if it's not helping you answer that question, then the GFCE isn't working. But I think the fact we're having this conversation, you can say what you're interested in and the GFCE can bring together that community to help shows that it is working and should be able to work. And I think you'll see a lot more of those sort of meetings happening during the next year. Um, and I think having the five themes helps us structure those requests. You can say which themes they fall under and that helps get the right communities to come together. Thank you. We have one minute left. Flada, you wanted to make a comment, last comment. Um, yes, thank you, Catherine. Great, great, uh, great point. And now I'm, I'm thinking about the models within the GFC and basically from the head of the advisory board, um, our role is in a way to bring more technical community, uh, civil society and so on. So uh, there are two, two options. One is uh, there is an annual meeting of the GFC every year, right, um, uh, which is in C2. And there is a bunch of events over there. And there we can probably put even more efforts to bring other stakeholders um, into discussions. When it comes to continuous process or intercession, as we, li as we like to, to call it, usually the advisory board uh, brings inputs from civil society technical community about what the GFC works on, but not about the challenges of nas nations or, or on local level. Now that, that might be an idea actually that uh, the advisory board has more role even when the government, certain government like yours, has an issue that you need more uh, consultations with technical community that we help with that finding technical community civil society from other countries that can help you and vice versa if the technical community civil society need a government then we help GFC helps that so not only within the scope of what the GFC works in initiatives but on any other needs which are related to that so that's that's really maybe that's an idea for us to consider thank you okay the final final word for Carmen <laughs> thank you and thank you Catherine for your contribution
I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. You're, you're this week. I know. <laughs> she told me already before that she has to go. But uh, no, thank you. No, I just wanted to to uh, um, briefly just just uh, add one one element um, in the discussion about how can we ensure um, that uh, we complement each other and that um, all these uh, different capacity building uh, initiatives are. Um, um, are combined or, or, or that, that complementarity and synergy, et cetera, is, is, is ensured. Um, because you, you raised that important question. I wanted to add that um, uh, apart from the fact that the GFCE is a network of networks, and I think that helps to position the GFCE as um, a pivot, uh, to give it a pivotal place and, and role in ensuring this, 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 uh, this coordination, um, I would like to, to, to point out the fact that among the, the members of the GFCE, there are not only countries and, and um, uh, private actors, but also international organizations uh, and uh, worldwide, uh, with worldwide uh, membership, but also regional organizations like the Organization of American States, the African Union, um, so, and the EU. So that helps also to uh, ensure that uh, there is uh, more coordination and cooperation within uh, these different regions of the world, and the, the GFCE plays a very useful role there in, in with the, the OAS, et cetera, and, and, and the EU. So that also helps to, to bring some order and, and coherence uh, um, in, this, uh, in this field, and hopefully that, that adds to the, the big goal of uh, um, helping all. Thank you. Thank you. This will uh, conclude our session, and warm thank you and appreciation for my panel. Thank you, audience. We would love to continue the conversation. Contact details are on the screen as I speak, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And hopefully I'll see you at the point in the Netherlands yeah. as yeah. opposed to just yeah. random okay. random okay. Okay. around the world. <laughs> then then please could we all of oh, 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 thank you. Oh, yes, <laughs> is everywhere. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, have you met in India when you were here? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. oh yes. Uh, we have to. Uh, not, I, we, we, the last time I was not able to go to the uh, organizing uh, may have met uh, Jan yeah. Neusser, who was there. Uh, and uh, okay. meeting with you and to uh, also to hear uh, uh, more in detail yeah, okay, yes. about yes. Paul is spectacular. I saw Paul in Singapore a couple of weeks before. Yeah, please give him my regards. Yeah, he, he's spectacular. Thank you. Oh, you yeah. are? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, terrific. Well, it's great to meet you. Yeah, New Zealand is doing so many amazing things. Yeah, no, we, 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 we had a, I mean, the communique and uh, the agenda for our software were really, uh, I think we made a big step. Super. Well, lovely to meet you. And uh, maybe we'll see each other in Vienna at some point. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, yeah, also people, yeah, by the way, in, in, in that discussion.